Have you noticed in the last few years, in particular the last year, how we're seeing more and more of these little compact Maksutsov uh, cassa grains? I know you can get similar Smith cast grains and, and Klefsov designs, but in this video we'll talk about the Maksutsov design. Uh, you're finding more of these coming out and less long tube refractors, and so are we seeing the end of the long tube refractor being replaced by these. And so in this video we'll go through the difference between the two, uh, what are they used for, and yes, uh, is it the end of the long tube refractor, which I'll uh, give my thoughts to uh, at the end of the video. And so now we'll have a look at this telescope in a little bit more detail, and also a very uh, similar long focal length uh, refractor and uh, I, I mentioned earlier long tube refractors what, what I mean to say is long focal length. This one you might think how on earth have they done it it has a focal length of 850 millimeters taking into account the thousand millimeters that's one meter and so you might think that doesn't quite work out. Now what I'm going to show you is uh, my own TAL refractor that has a focal length of 1000 millimeters and so you'd expect it to be about that long wouldn't you so here we go my including dew shield unique or one-off tal four inch refractor this has a focal length just 15 centimeters or 150 millimeters longer than the telescope that we've just looked at now how is that possible let me explain and so why would some people prefer, let's say, a, a long focal length 4-inch refractor as opposed to a much shorter focal length one? You know, with a shorter focal length you get uh, much lighter and a wider field of view. But you also, like for like, get more chromatic aberration or false colour. And so that's uh, very important uh, for visual work and, and even more so for uh, photographic work if you like to do uh, uh, long exposures although in, in editing you can reduce that but but I yeah but definitely for visual use you do find there is a lot uh, less chromatic aberration and it can handle higher magnification better and so next up we'll have a look at the diagram showing the inner workings and first of all the uh, a long focal length uh, refractor similar to the one I had uh, the TAL 4 inch F10 that I had on the table earlier and it just showed the extended part uh, which is the dew shield and it comes with a doublet objective lens some come with triplets some budget ones may come with a single but in this case it comes with a doublet objective lens the light goat travels down to the focuser to the eyepiece and to uh, the eye of the person who is looking through it and uh, and that that is a nice simple design perfect for lunar planetary and double star observations and uh, now we take a look at the uh, max hoopsoft design and this will hopefully show why uh, you can get a longer focal length in a short body but it's quite a uh, complex uh, lens and mirror assembly so the light comes down through the corrector plate that you can see below uh, bounces off a primary mirror then back again to a secondary mirror which is in the middle of that corrective plate then back down to the diagonal, the eyepiece and the end user and so basically you get like a third of the length all squeezed into one basically with uh, the, the, how the light is bouncing from one side to the other. Years ago this used to be a very expensive design but now the prices are coming down uh, significantly and uh, pretty much the same price as a similar size uh, refractor I would say there's not much difference between the two. Uh, years ago uh, if a, a new range of telescopes would come out you'd maybe have a, a Newtonian reflector and in the middle a short tube refractor complemented by a long tube refractor but now that long tube refractor or local, long focal length is being replaced by uh, either smith cassegrain or a Mac Zutsov and uh, you know and that seems to be the way things are going. So summing up really do the uh, these ultra compact uh, Mac Zutsov cassegrains and similar 
Do these mean it's the end of the long focal length refractor? I hope not. Uh, they still have a, a number of choices uh, from different brands available and hopefully they will continue to be produced over the years but I don't have a crystal ball. For me personally um, I, I hope they do and uh, if let's say when it's time to hang up my boots or hang up the telescopes uh, and binoculars which would be the last telescope I ever got rid of for my own personal collection, I've got quite a few, it would be my TAL 4-inch refractor that you saw earlier. For me personally it's the best double star telescope I personally have ever looked through and uh, teamed up with my uh, TMB 10mm eyepiece, not to be confused with the recent ones, this is like over 30 years old, made in Germany. Uh, I think it was uh, £180 back then. Uh, that combination, absolutely fantastic for double stars. And so, yeah, I uh, thought I'd just give a little something different today. Uh, a little uh, discussion about uh, whether or not these Max Tutsoffs are going to take, not take over the world, but take over from the uh, long tube or long focal length refractors. Um, I'll give a link. Uh, in the description below like so you can see the full range of these uh, available to buy from our, ourselves obviously you are supporting our channel by doing so please uh, say to me in the comments if you have your own thoughts on if you prefer these or the good old-fashioned long focal length refractors so i hope this helps and i'll see you next time